let us talk about the happiness of achieving your dreams. What if I tell you that there's an expiration date to that happiness? And what if I tell you that this expiration date is shorter than you think? These are the two main insights of my work as a behavioral economist and well-being researcher over the last 10 years, and I'm happy to share them with you. But first, let me start at the beginning. When I was leaving high school, I struggled with the decision about what to do next. I wondered, what are the dreams I should achieve to lead a happy life? My feeling was that I needed the experience of an entire lifetime to know what brings me lasting happiness. Some years later, as a student, I stumbled upon the fascinating research on subjective well-being, and I had a realization. Instead of living my entire life first to know the sources of lasting happiness, I could study subjective well-being data now and learn from the experiences of thousands of other people. Later in my doctoral studies in economics, I finally had the opportunity to work with such data. I used the German Socioeconomic Panel Survey, which interviews more than 30,000 people over many consecutive years about their life satisfaction. But not only this, when I browsed through the questionnaire of the survey, I discovered that people are also asked how satisfied they think they will be in five years' time. <laughs> and I almost shouted Eureka when I realized that with this information, I can not only study what makes people happy, but also if they foresee the happiness of achieving their dreams. So before diving into the data, let me ask the two questions to you. First, how satisfied are you with your life? Everything considered on a scale from zero, completely dissatisfied to 10, completely satisfied. And as a second follow-up question, how satisfied do you think you will be in five years' time on the same scale? Well, don't worry, you don't need to reveal your numbers. <laughs> and I'm not a mind reader either. But what I know is, is that it is very likely that many of you resemble this little boy who's saying, I can't wait to grow up and be happy. <laughs> no offense, but this is what the data tell us. If we plot current and expected life satisfaction across the lifespan, we can see that for young people, the red stars indicating expected life satisfaction are above the black triangles indicating current life satisfaction. This means that young people expect their life satisfaction to be higher in five years than it currently is. But obviously this is a false belief, as life satisfaction is highest when people are youngest. For old people, the story is different. Well, quite the opposite. As old people expect their life satisfaction in five years, years to be lower than it currently is. But this again is a false belief, as life satisfaction even starts increasing again, increasing again around the age of 60. So if you're in my age group, there's hope. <laughs> One day we will end eventually become happier and be grown up, but it will take longer than five years. As promised with this data, we can also look at the happiness of achieving our dreams and whether we have the right beliefs about it. A first belief, a first belief, a first dream we could look at is the dream to find true love. Sadly, there's no measure for true love in my data set, but there is the information about people's marital status. So we can ask, how does life satisfaction change when people get married? The first part of the answer is reflecting a true love story. <laughs> Maybe you're anticipating. <laughs> I shouldn't have split it that no. So the true love story, as the data tell us. The second part of the story, of the answer, sorry for all the engaged couples in the audience. <laughs> does not look as rosy. In fact, that's why I promised to my wife at her own wedding that we will be statistical outliers. <laughs> And we both still are, 
I hope. <laughs> My wife is nodding. <laughs> My wife is nodding, lucky me. Anyway, there is an expiration date to the happiness of getting married. Now, the beautiful thing about this data is that we can also study whether newlyweds have accurate beliefs about how long their happiness lasts. The red star tells you the answer, because it shows what newly married people expect how satisfied they will be in five years' time. And when we make this comparison, we see that they were overly optimistic and did not fully foresee the expiration date of their own happiness. A second dream we could look at is the dream of home ownership. And people are often willing to invest a lot in making this dream come true, including a lot of money and energy. So here I want to emphasize that it is important to have accurate beliefs, because we have to rely on our beliefs whenever we make decisions, big or small. With this in mind, let us turn to the data. This graph shows you how life satisfaction changes when people buy and move to their home. A similar pattern as before, as life satisfaction is increasing, but again, there's strong adaptation. So do people foresee this adaptation this time? The red star tells us a clear no, because new homeowners expect their life satisfaction to remain high in the next five years. And when we make the comparison, we see that they were overly, overly optimistic and did not foresee the adaptation at all. Importantly, these two insights, the expiration date of happiness and the misprediction of it, are not limited to marriage and home ownership. Our research shows that they are also prevalent for other life goals, including entering parenthood or becoming self-employed. So we should beware of not falling into what we could call a if-only trap, meaning the potentially false belief that if only I achieve my dream, I will find lasting happiness. But this is not the end of the story yet. Life sometimes is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. <laughs> so we might wonder about negative life changes too. And of course, a negative life change is never one's goal, but we could study if there's an expiration date to unhappiness too. One of the truly negative life events many people experience in their lives, sadly so, is when they lose their loved ones. The data shows us that, as we all expected, there's a huge drop in people's life satisfaction when their partner dies. In fact, I do not know of any other life event for which life satisfaction drops as drastically. A word of comfort, however, is that people are able to adapt even to such a terrible event. So indeed, there is an expiration date to unhappiness too. And looking at the red star and making the comparison, we see that widowed people recover faster than they expected. So we can conclude that life and our happiness is more dynamic than we expect it to be. And I'm glad I had this insight without living my entire life first. If good things happen in our lives, we should be grateful, them, grateful for them and enjoy them to the fullest, because the happiness that comes along with them shall pass. And if bad things happen in our lives, we should not paint the future too dark, because this unhappiness too shall pass. Thank you. Thank you.